Welcome back, everybody, to part 13 in our beginner scripting series. I hope you're excited. I know it's been a while, uh, so I apologize for the um, wait, but today we're on the last part before the final game. Uh, today we're talking about remote events and how we can use those. Um, but to start this out, I actually want to show you one thing I meant to show you in the last episode. Um, so we created this shop UI, right? And um, something I forgot to mention. So let's say you had this frame, right? Because... Um, you can insert a frame and resize it and all that stuff. So let's say you have this frame right here, and uh, what you want to do is open the shop whenever a button is clicked, right? Um, basically, I just want to quickly show you before we get into remote events how you can make certain UI visible and non-visible uh, because it's a property that I barely touched on, uh, I think, and it's this property right here called visible. So uh, it's something that we can do. We can go into this text button, script, and whenever we click this... Um, Whenever we do the script up here and the mouse button one down, right? Whenever we click this button, um, we currently are just setting the text of um, the button to say you clicked me, but we can also set the frame to be visible or invisible. So we can say script dot parent dot frame. Whoops, sorry dot parent dot frame because we have this current script, right? Dot parent. So the text button dot parent. <laughs> so this shop dot frame. Okay, that's this frame right here. And then we can say dot visible equals not script dot parent dot parent dot frame dot visible. So you may be wondering what this is. Basically, you can say not um, to get the opposite. So uh, for visible, it's true or false. So not is going to be the opposite. If it's true, we're going to set it to false. If it's false, we're going to set it to true. So basically, we're going to set it to what it's currently not. <laughs> okay. So um, we're saying if it's already visible, let's set it to be not whatever it is. Right, so you can do that with bools. Um, just say not true or not its current visible uh, visibility, um, and that'll just you know make it true or false if it is. Uh, it'll make it true if it's false and false if it's true. So as you can see, when we click this UI, it opens up our um, frame. Okay, so let's get into remote events now. All right, let's talk about remote events. First off, what are remote events? Basically, you can kind of run functions from client to server and server to client. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. For example, we'll be able to click this button uh, and spawn in a part in on the server so everybody will be able to see it. So to do so, we need to create a, re a remote event. Um, I like to keep my re uh, remote events inside of replicated storage. You can also put them in server storage, uh, but I prefer replicated storage. Um, so it's really it's up to you where you want to store them, but certain parts of the game, like server script service, only the server can see. Uh, but replicated storage, both servers and clients can see. So I like to keep my remote events there. Um, so let's go ahead and name this remote event. This is um, let's just call this um, spawn part, and you can call this whatever you want. It's kind of like the name of your function when we're thinking about functions. Uh, it's kind of like hey, this is what we're gonna do with it. It's just it doesn't mean anything necessarily. It's just to help you. Um, also, let's see here. So, after we make this, uh, thing, uh, let's just go ahead and create a new script, actually. Let's create a new button and a new script. I'm gonna just take the current one I have, and then click Control D to make a duplicate of it. Uh, next, I'll just drag this up, and I'll change the text to, say, uh, spawn part. Okay. Next, uh, let's go ahead and head into, let's create, if you haven't already got one, create a local script and put it inside of the text button. We'll call this spawn part client. Okay, so first off, we want to, this to happen whenever the button is clicked. So we'll say script.parent.mouse button one down, go and connect function, right? This is, um, so this will run whenever uh, this button is clicked. Next, what, what do we want to do? In this case, we want to actually uh, fire this event so that we can pick it up on the server and the way we do that is by saying game dot replicated storage dot spawn part colon fire server okay so this right here um, as you can see we um, we are um, just saying uh, taking the spawn part remote event we are finding that remote event and we're saying colon fire server that just basically sends a trigger to the server now we need to actually pick it up. So let's insert a script into server script service script, and we'll call this remote event script, remote events script. Okay, so now we actually have to pick up this um, event. So we can say game dot replicated storage dot um, spawn part dot on server event colon connect function player. Okay, so write all this out, um, and I'm going to explain what we're saying right now. 
So first, we're getting the spawn part removed, right? We're saying game dot replicated storage dot spawn part right here. Uh, game, the whole game, dot replicated storage, inside of there, inside of there is the spawn part. So now we have the remote event. This is an event right here, so on server event. Basically, it just says, hey, whenever we did fire server, right? So whenever we actually uh, called the fire server from a client, uh, we're going to pick this up. So to do this, let's just start out by saying print uh, picked up on the server. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and close out of this, and let's open the output. Let's go ahead and give it a run, and uh, what we're going to do, or not a run, a play, let's play it, and then let's click the spawn part um, button, and as you can, as you can see, uh, we are getting picked up on the server printed in the output right here, okay? So, as you can see, our local script, whenever we click the button, we're saying spawn part fire server, so we're sending a message to all the, uh, or to the server, saying, hey, pick this up, okay? And um, and then once we're on the server, this, let's see, where's the remote event script? There it is. Basically, we're just saying, hey, whenever this actually is fired to the server, we're going to do whatever is inside of here. Now, we have this built-in parameter player, and that's just um, the current, or the player that is connected to the client that we uh, fired from. So basically, the player that caused this event to happen. Um, because if you think about it, we sent this message from the client, right? Every, every player has their own client. So we sent it from my client. So the server can then see what client actually fired it. In this case, it's me, right? That's the one who actually clicked the button. I clicked it. So we automatically get this parameter of the player. So. Uh, let's go ahead and actually spawn in a part next to their player. So we can say local part equals instance dot new part, and then we can say part dot parent equals uh, game dot workspace. Then we can say part dot brick color equals brick color dot random, and then down here let's go ahead and find the character. So we can say local character equals game dot workspace, okay? Because remember, everything uh, everything 3D is in the workspace that you can see. So we're, we know that the player's character, actually, let me show you this real quick. We know that the player's character will be in the workspace. So if we open this up, as you can see, my character is right here. It's a model. And all characters are stored inside of the workspace. So what we can do is we can actually say, hey, game dot workspace, can wait for child, and then the player's name to wait for their character. So we can do that. So we can say game dot workspace colon wait for child player dot name. That's just a way to get the player. There are other ways, but I think this is a nice way to do it. Um, so we're saying, hey, let's wait until we found the player's name inside of the workspace. That's got to be their character, unless you have like an NPC with the same name. Next, now that we have the character, we can say um, local uh, humanoid. Actually, let's do local head equals character colon wait for child head like this so head is going to be inside of all the care all of char uh, every single character including um, r6 and r15 so we're basically just saying hey this new variable called head that is the character's head right we are finding the character we are waiting for child head and we are going to then say part dot position equals head dot position right so we're saying the player's head position but we don't want to spawn it right inside the head or that'll be problematic so we can say plus vector 3 dot new so we're adding vectors 5 comma 0 comma 5 so this will take the current head position uh, let's go ahead and illustrate this a bit uh, let me just go ahead and grab a head uh, alright there we go so we have a noob head right here now let's just pretend that this is the character's head right here and we are saying hey we're going to um, let me also turn on this view selector we kind of cover we covered this uh, more in depth in our uh, vector 3 episode but we're saying hey this new parts position is going to be the heads position but also we're adding five on the x-axis okay we're adding five studs there we're adding none on the up and down the y but we're also adding five on the z okay so it'll spawn somewhere near their player I hope that makes sense um, that's basically what this is doing so whenever we pick this up we should um, spawn a part uh, near the player so let's go ahead and uh, play this and click spawn part and as you can see we have spawned a part all right awesome so we can keep spawning parts all over the place we can make a trail of parts if we want uh, let's just make a few more now here's the cool thing right Remember how we are doing this on the client. We are starting on the client and then we're firing a remote event to the server. If we switch to the server using this button right here, 
you can see that all of these parts have been created in the server, right? That's because we used a remote event. If we had done this all in the local script, it would have been on the client and only this player would have been able to see it. But we actually made these on the server, um, meaning that the player can actually see uh, this, um, every player can actually see this. So that is remote events to uh, the server. Next, let's talk about from the server to the client, okay? So this is going to be um, a little bit quicker. What we can do is we can insert a screen GUI into starter GUI. Let's, let's insert a text label down here or over here. Let's resize it. Uh, let's bring it over here. You can follow along here or you can make your own UI. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this background transparency right here to 1 so that it's invisible. Then let's hit text scaled so that we can see our text a lot better. Let's change the text color to white and let's change the font. Let's do luckiest guy. There we go. So now we have this little label up here. Okay. And let's just uh, set the text of this to be, oops, not rich text, status. Okay. And then we can call this status as well. Okay. So we now have this right here and let's just display a status on here. Um, but we want to do this from the server. So um, let's start out by creating a, uh, actually, no, we'll do this in the remote event script. So in the remote event script, we'll say game dot players dot player added colon connect function player right whenever a player is added we're going to do this and we get the player we've done this a lot already so hopefully you have gotten the hang of this now let's also re uh, create another remote event and we are going to call this remote event update status so update status there we go so we have this new remote event we're basically just going to say whenever the player is uh, has joined the game, we'll just wait a couple seconds to let them load in, and then we'll say game dot replicated storage dot update status clone fire client, and then this is basically the opposite of fire server, right? We're going uh, in fire server, it's the client to the server. On fire client, it is the server firing to the client. So for this, we actually need a player because. Um, we need the client to actually fire it too, because um, when we use fire server, well, there's only one server. So the script already knows, hey, we're just going to fire it to the one server in the game. However, there are tons of clients. Every player has their own client, so we need to know which one. In this case, we want to fire it to the player that just joined the game. Okay, so I hope that makes sense so far. Now, let's insert a local script into our status. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, say, uh, I don't know. We can call this update status client. All right. Okay, so now we actually want to pick this up on the client. And you may have a guess as to how we do this. Basically, we're going to say game.replicated storage. Uh, dot, oh, wait, what's this one called? Uh, update status. That's what this remote event is called. Dot on client event colon connect function. Okay. So this will run whenever we um, receive the message from the server to the client. It's basically the same on server event that's picking it up on the server. On client event is picking it up on the client or in local scripts. Now we don't actually get the player in here. Uh, that's because we don't actually need it to get the player. We just say local player equals game dot players dot local player. Um, and that's just a way you can get the player of the, the local script. So or the player of the client, we don't actually get the player as a parameter. So uh, let's just say script.parent.text equals to uh, you have joined the game. So if we play this, whenever we join the game, we should see this status change to say you have joined the game, right? Because after two seconds, it has fired this update status remote event, and we have picked it up on the client, and then we have set the text to be that. And if you switch to the server, you can see it still says status, and that's because we never updated it on the server. We updated it on the client. Okay. So, uh, something I want to show you now, before we wrap things up, because this is a longer one, um, you can actually pass parameters into your remote events. So after the player on the fire client, we can send whatever parameters we want, just like functions, how we can send our own custom parameters. So in this case, let's just send the string, you have joined the game. Okay, and now on the client, so on this script, inside of here, we can pick up the parameters and we can call this message, okay? So the message is going to be whatever we actually got from the server. And in this case, we know, uh, let's go ahead and go into this. We know we sent the string, you have joined the game. So we can actually set the script.parent.txt to be the message, right? Because we have, we have fired this and sent in this custom parameter, you joined the game. So if we hit play, 
we should still see the same results. Okay, so we have the same results right here. You have joined the game. That's be because we actually um, sent in the parameter. Uh, the, the script was still able to pick it up. And we can do that with as many parameters as we want. So we can also pass in a boolean and a player and whatever we want to pass in uh, just like with functions. So I hope this is making sense. It just takes some practice. Uh, but one other thing I want to show you guys is you can actually, there's one more way to fire remote events. So we can say while uh, true do, so that'll just loop forever. If you're going to do it that way, you need to add a 10 or sorry, <laughs> you need to add a wait. Otherwise your studio will crash. So forever, we're going to wait 10 seconds, and then we're going to do this last method of um, firing remote events. We're going to say game.replicatedStorage.updateStatus colon fire all clients. So this is the last thing you can do. This basically is a quick way to fire to all players, all clients. And um, you can actually do this without, um, uh, without, you don't put a player in here, right? Because we're just sending it to all the players, not a specific player, just like in fire client. Now we actually need to pass in a parameter because um, in this up update status, um, as you can see, we have this parameter message. That's what we set the text to be. So we need to send in something to be our message. Um, and we can just say, this is updating to all clients. And then let's just go ahead and copy and paste this so to save time. So instead, we can uh, wait five seconds instead of ten this time, and let's send in a new message. Are uh, are we all getting this message? <laughs> so um, after ten seconds, it should change to this is updating all clients, and then five, are we all getting this message? And then it'll loop back up again. After ten seconds, it'll do this. After five, it'll do this. So that's how you can do fire all clients. Let's go ahead and give it a play test so you guys can see it in action. Um, and you have joined the game. After five, uh, 10 seconds, we should see it update to all the clients. Um, this is updating to all clients. There we go. And in five seconds, we should see it change again. Yep, are we all getting this message? And indeed we are. It's not updating to the server, but it'll be updating to all clients. So all players in your game will see this. And we can still spawn our parts. So that is remote events. I hope that you found this video helpful. Uh, remote events are definitely something that you need to practice. It took me a long time before I could actually um, really understand them. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, just give some practice um, to remote events. And that was actually it to for the beginner scripting series. Now the next one will be on making a final game so we will be doing that very soon um i hope to get it out at least in the next couple days that's my goal uh, but i have been pretty busy with school and stuff recently so we'll, we'll see when i actually get it out <laughs> but thank you guys for watching all 13 parts i hope you're excited to make a game now with what we have learned um if this was helpful if this series was helpful for you i really appreciate it if you'd subscribe no pressure to, but um, it means a lot to me. It really helps me out. So appreciate everybody who has stuck, uh, stuck along this far. And let's go ahead and get excited for the final game, which is coming out very soon. Um, and then, yeah, you can join my Discord server. Link in the description, all that good stuff. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.